From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment. Oh, hi, Pat. What's on your mind? The sleek, lovely, beautiful Ellen Deer. On the strength of that description, I'll take her. And she's loaded. $325,000 worth of jewelry. Hey, that girl needs a bodyguard, sleep. Yeah, yeah, Johnny. Needs a guard of some kind, only she isn't a girl. She's a boat. I've just lost my enthusiasm. What's the matter with the old tub? That's what I want you to find out, Johnny. That last crack suddenly got me interested again. Okay, Pat, I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Western Maritime and Property Insurance Company, Los Angeles, California. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Ellen Deer matter. Expense account item 190 cents taxi from my apartment at the offices of Universal Adjustment Bureau in Hartford. Pat McCracken's usual smile was noticeably missing when I walked in on him. Come in, Johnny, and sit down. Thanks. Oh, and you're to bill Western Maritime and property on this one instead of us. Okay, but how are you involved? We handle all their claims that are of any size. Story, you ever hear of Randolph Berman? Mm, I know of a jeweler down in New York. That's the Berman. one. And if you know him, Johnny, you've been putting too much gravy in your expense account. I said no of him. Hmm. Didn't he bring in the uh, star of Cape Town and the Kamandu Emerald? That's right. Everybody seems to think he's a crook, and yet somehow he manages to handle some of the finest jewels in the world. How could an honest man afford it? Yeah. This time it's the Betten House collection. It's out of Hungary. Oh, yeah, I read about that. Only I, I thought somebody down in Mexico owned it. Yeah, a fellow named Rigo Mariani, down in Guadalajara. He's the one who sold it to Randolph Berman. Okay, now. Is this Ellen Deer you mentioned, Berman's wife? Uh, no, no, no. Former, former wife. He's on about his fifth. All beautiful dumb dolls. But more important, it's the name of his 72-foot motor cruiser. Mm -hmm. And the Burmans have been traveling around in it, down the coast, through the canal, along the coast of Central America, and so on. Anyhow, when he got word that the Betten House collection could be had, he wasted no time in getting to Guadalajara. And that's where Western Maritime and Property comes in. Right. They had already written a policy on the boat for 52000 Their main office in Los Angeles was close at hand, so he had them write the policy on the jewels. Is that where Berman is now in Los Angeles? Oh, no, no. He's still in Mexico. Didn't want to move with those priceless rocks until he was certain of the insurance. And before Weston would write it, of course, they wanted the collection of prey. Naturally. But who in Mexico? Uh, Jacques Jean-Pierre, the famous gemologist, was right there in Guadalajara, you know, to look over the collection himself. So he made the appraisal. The policy has been issued. 325,000. I still don't see anything wrong with the whole deal, Pat. Well, there isn't anything wrong with it yet. But in spite of Berman standing in the profession, he... His reputation, it isn't everything it might be. Yeah, come to think of it, wasn't there a killing or two involved in this acquisition of the Star there of Cape There have been Town? several things like that. He's been involved in attempts to smuggle in some valuable pieces. He's... Oh, well. He always managed somehow to come out smelling like a rose. Legally, perfectly clean, you understand? But you still don't trust him. Oh, no, no. And with his planning to carry that load of stuff around in his yacht. Yeah, see what you mean. If anything happened to those rocks or the boat, over 300 grand right out the window. Exactly. Now, belatedly, Western is worried about it. And they'll pay good money to have you assuage their worries. You have a Mexican tourist card? Sure, from my last fishing trip down there. And I think you better go down and guard that collection until Berman gets it safely up into the States. He's considered quite the host. He'll probably be perfectly willing to have you aboard. Now, this is the kind of assignment I like, yachting in the Blue Pacific. But surely he hasn't got his boat parked in Guadalajara. That's over 100 miles inland. Oh, it's at Mazatlan. And from what I've been able to learn, it's surrounded by armed guards day and night. Well, he has some engine work done. But as soon as that's finished, he'll head north to the state. So he says. Got a branch office in Los Angeles. He'll probably deliver the collection there. I just want to be sure he gets there, Johnny. Hmm? Okay, Pat. You can wire the boys at Weston that I'm on my way. 
Item 2, 19140, plane fare and incidentals, Hartford to Mazatlan via Los Angeles. The first leg of the flight to L.A. was uneventful. Except for a good-looking young blonde from Santa Barbara, whom I promised to look up as soon as this case is... Well, that's not for the expense account. <clears throat> when we arrived at the Los Angeles International Airport, I learned that I'd have a three-quarter hour wait for my plane to Mazatlan. So I grabbed a magazine, that's item three, 35 cents, when I heard my name being called on the PA system. Johnny Dollar, report to Pan American Airways desk. With a thought in mind that perhaps my little friend from the plane might have decided to stay over in L.A. Her name was Rita, by the way. I lost no time in getting over to the Pan Am desk. Uh, Mr. Dollar? Yeah? Uh, Johnny Dollar? That's right. I'm Arthur Arthur, Western Maritime and Property Insurance Company. Oh, yeah, how do, Mr. Arthur? Planning to go on down to Mazatlan with me? Uh, no, no. But, uh, meet Monsieur Jacques Jean-Pierre. Monsieur Dollar, I am honored. How are you, Mr. Jean-Pierre? Uh, this is the gentleman who appraised the Batten House collection for us. Oh, yes, yes. I have so an expert. So that could issue the policy on it to Mr. Berman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he's done this sort of thing for us many times. Oh, I don't know now, how many... I'm afraid that he's brought us rather bad news. Something's already happened to the collection? Well, not exactly... Not for the whole collection. No, I no, mean. not the, the well, whole. Uh, 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 please. Uh, that is, I'm not quite sure. What I mean is. Yeah, just what do you mean, Mr. Arthur? Uh, perhaps I should explain to Monsieur Dollar, eh? Well, I think somebody better. Yes, you go ahead, Jean. Yeah, very well. And while you're doing it, I'll cancel the rest of Mr. Dollar's reservation to Mozartlan. Yes, I'll do it. Oh, clearly. Oh, no, wait a minute. First, let me find out what this is all about. Ah, oui, oui, oui. Oh, oui. very well. Jacques here was in Guadalajara when the Batten House collection became available for purchase. Uh -huh. uh, yes, Monsieur Dollar. I had gone there in the hope that some of the pieces might be purchased separately. So? Alas, such was not the case. The Mariani firm decided to dispose of the collection only as a whole. I see. Well, what's this bad news you have? Ah, I am getting to yes, that. Yes, you see, it's this no, way. Please, please. Oh, please. Well, then, then go ahead, Jacques. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Monsieur Dollar, interested as I was, I looked over the collection very carefully, each individual piece. Oh, yeah. oh, and you must so. believe me, to an expert like myself, every facet of every gem has a character all its own. A precious stone is like a face to me, always to be remembered. Yeah. Well, go on, please. I simply wish to make it clear to you, monsieur, that every item in the Bettenhouse collection is completely familiar to me. Oh, it is. As are many other important gems throughout the world. You know, each is like a friend. And each stone in them is like a face. Ah, precisely. Always to be remembered. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, well, uh... The, the, the collection is purchased by Monsieur Randolph Berman. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Yes, Berman. Please, please. Uh, uh, he wishes to insure it in Monsieur Arthur's company. Yeah, I know all that. Well, Monsieur Arthur requests by telephone that I appraise it. 325000 Ah, then you know. I know. So, I stay at Guadalajara a few days to wait Monsieur Arthur's check for my service. Yes. You want to be sure uh, the check please, was right. please. I visit some of my old friends among the jewel setters. And then... Then, on the third day, what do you think happens? You tell me. Johnny, this is it. In the shop... No, no, please, yeah. monsieur. Oh, I'm sorry. Sir. In the shop of my friend Garcia, Hernandez, I watch him work on the mound for a beautiful diamond. And suddenly, I see that the stone is an old friend. One from the Patton House collection? Ah, oui. The caliber diamond that was supposedly in the possession of Monsieur Berman. You're sure of the identity of that stone, Mr. Jean-Pierre? Oh, please. As I told you, monsieur, a precious stone to yeah, me... Yeah, yeah, it's like a face to you. So what you figure, Arthur, is that you've insured a boatload of $300,000 worth of gems on the way to the USA, and maybe they're not on board. Exactly. Unless, of course... Mr. That... Jean-Pierre, did you tell Mr. Berman about this one stone? Oh, I went immediately to Mazatlan, where I knew he had his boat, the LND. Well, what did he say? Uh, alas, he had sailed away. Did you learn his destination? Oh, he, yes. Uh, 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 Los Angeles, Johnny, right here. He has a branch office. Well, has he had time to get here yet? I don't think so. Have you tried radioing to his yacht? No, no, I've done nothing. You see, I didn't learn about this until Mr. Jean-Pierre arrived just a few hours ago. Yes, I came up on the aeroplane. The better to arrive and speak with Monsieur Arthur before Monsieur Berman would arrive. Do you know where Berman plans to dock his boat? Well, I... I, I probably the, the port in San Pedro, if he is coming here. But who can be sure? Usually on vacation trips, he, he docks down the coast of Balboa, the yacht club. Or, who knows, he might even... Yeah... He might have no intention of coming up to the States at all. He might not even have the jewels with him. He... Arthur, do you know where his branch office is? Oh, oh yes, it, uh, it's in Los Angeles. Well, actually, it's in Beverly Hills. Got a car? Uh, yeah. Then let's go. 
Though he couldn't quite put his finger on it, Arthur was convinced that Randolph Berman was up to something and that his insurance company was going to have to take the rap. On the way into Berman's Beverly Hills office, we dropped Jean-Pierre at the Beverly Hilton and told him to sit tight in case we needed him again. Berman's office was in a nice modern building on South Beverly Drive, tastefully furnished with pictures of various famous jewels on the walls, but with nothing of particular value in evidence. However, I did notice that one wall held a built-in vault big enough for a reasonably sized bank. We were approached by a hand-rubbing, obsequious little character dressed in striped pants and cutaway coat and wearing thick glasses. Good morning, gentlemen. Is there any way I may be of service to you? Yeah, I think there is. Are you oh, the... Oh, Mr. Arthur, forgive me. I didn't recognize you for a moment. Mr. Carello, this is Mr. Johnny Dollar. Hi. How do you do? Is there something I may show you, Mr. Dollar? Some little uh, bauble, perhaps, for a charming lady? Well, not at the moment, Mr. Carello. Oh. Oh, Mr. Arthur, there's no reason to mail this to you. Uh, let me see now. Oh, yes, here it is. Uh, here is a request for slight revision of the policy on the Benton House collection. Oh? What's this? Well, the wire was sent by Mr. Berman just before he embarked for Mazatland. I was going to put it into letter form to be more What's proper. What's But, well, uh, now here, I'll, I'll read this. Please request Arthur revise Benton House policy. Exclude Calabar Diamond. Value 4000 which I have sold private party in Guadalajara. Oh, well, we kind of guessed wrong, didn't we, John? Hmm. Mr. Carello. Yes. Has Mr. Berman wired you whether he's coming here? Oh, of course he is, with that collection. When? When is he going to arrive? Well, his lovely yacht, the El India, should reach San Pedro Harbor late tonight. But that's what he wired me, and I intend to meet him there. Then I'm sure you won't mind if I go with you. Oh? Uh, uh, Mr. Dollar is a special investigator. Investigator? Well, actually, I'm here just to help Mr. Berman protect that collection. Oh, excellent. Then you can arrange for the police escort. Yes, and alert the harbor police to guard the El India, as Mr. Berman requested. Did he request that? Oh, indeed. But apparently he hasn't been worried about anything happening to the collection while he's at sea. At sea? Oh. oh. Surely you don't mean pirates or anything like that in this modern day and age. <laughs> you know something? At this point, I'm not quite sure what I mean. Or even why I'm here. Uh, well, of course. Um, well. Well, of course what, Arthur? Oh, excuse me while I answer that. Well, I mean... Berman uh, Jewel. Uh, that is... Uh, what? Uh, well, at least I'll feel better when the stuff is here in the vault. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no. Carello at the phone paled visibly, then gasped and clutched the back of a chair for support as he listened on the phone. His jaw dropped, his eyes widened, and he shook his head once or twice in horrified disbelief. Finally, slowly, he hung up and came unsteadily toward us. Mr. Carello. Yeah, what is it, Mr. Carello? The, the Coast Guard. Yes? They said the Ellender, the yacht. Yes? Sunk. What? In 600 feet of water in the outer channel. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Democracy. What has it to do with money, the medium of exchange of mankind? A couple of thousand years ago, it was said that money alone sets the world in motion. That's one way of saying that money and economy are virtually one and the same thing. The economy of a nation depends on its commerce. Commerce depends on manufacturing and services. It has been proven that those nations which practice democracy have the greatest economics. That means money, more money for more people, and a greater freedom of opportunity to earn a higher standard of living. That's why democracy provides mankind with its richest legacy of freedom. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Ellen Deer Matter. <laughs> Expense account item four, seven dollars even for a fast taxi ride to Coast Guard headquarters in San Pedro, which is really the port of Los Angeles. By dint of elbowing my way in, I got directly to Captain Barney Thorson. I'm afraid you got only half the story, Mr. Dollar. All I know, Captain, is that the Ellen Deer went down in some 600 feet of water in the outer channel. Total loss. That's correct. However, what you don't know is that the passengers, Mr. and Mrs. Berman, and the crew were picked up and brought in here. Oh, Outside of a little soaking and a little scare, they were perfectly all right. 
You see, the Ellen Deerhead apparently had some engine trouble before she left Mazatlan. Yes, so I understand. Mexican authorities, with whom we fully cooperate, notified us we'd better keep an eye out for her. So when she reached the channel, we weren't surprised to get a radio call from her asking us to stand by that Universal joint was kicking up. Is that what happened? By the time one of our cutters got within hailing distance, she was on the way down. That propeller shaft had whipped loose, torn through the hull, and the Ellen Deer was sinking fast. Ask me, that boat was overpowered, Dolly. How do you mean? Well, it must have been, because sheer torque tore the whole engine loose from its mountings. And it plowed through the bottom along with everything else on board that was heavy. It was a big safe, for instance, anchored to mid. There was a what? A safe. A safe, you know, a small, heavy steel vault. Yeah, I know. That went down, too? Yeah, with the engine. It was all our boys could do to keep the owner from diving over after it. It was crying like a baby. You'd think he'd had the crown jewels in it. Maybe you're not too wrong at that. What? Not the crown jewels, perhaps, but a collection worth something over 300 grand. Now, what about salvage? Salvage operations in 600 feet of water in that channel? Oh, yeah. No, no, Dolly. Salvage, even if it were possible, it would cost a couple of times the worth of that stuff, at least. The only passengers were the Burmans, huh? That's right. Prove three. And they weren't able to save anything? Nothing. Not of any consequence, that is. One of the crew didn't even have his shoes and his shirt on. What about Berman and his wife? <laughs> it's funny what people will do in an emergency sometimes. What do you mean? Well, you've heard about the man whose house catches fire, he gets panicky, throws all the china and the glassware out the window, and carries out the mattress. What are you getting at, Captain? The only thing that Berman saved in his excitement was two beat-up old hats and a fishing rod. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. And all his wife brought along was a handful of nylon stockings. She was hanging on to them for dear life. Oh, yeah, a big hat box with an evening dress half hanging out of it. And that's all? That's all. Hey, you know, that Mrs. Berman's quite a dish. Not too bright, but a real looker. Where are they now, Captain? They're headed for Beverly Hills. Beverly Wilshire was the hotel, I think. In any event, Dollar, I'm afraid your company is going to have a big, fat claim to pay. On the yacht, yes. What's that mean? What do you think? <laughs> Item 5320, long distance call to the police in Mazatlan. I wanted to be sure that the Benton House collection had been on board the Ellen Deer when she left port down there. Inspector Romulo assured me it had, that he'd checked the safe on the boat himself before allowing it to sail. Furthermore, he had insisted his own maritime service keep tabs on it up to the point where it made contact with the U.S. Coast Guard. In other words, the loot couldn't very well have been passed to someone else at sea. Item 6580, cab fare to Beverly Hills, where I dropped in at Berman's office. No, Mr. Dollar. He and Mrs. Berman are at the Beverly Wilshire. I'm sure you understand it's been necessary for them to buy a lot of clothes and things. Yeah, but he will come here. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, from his last phone call, I'd say he'll be here within the hour. All right, then I'll come back. Please ask him to stick around and wait for me if he doesn't mind. Of course, Mr. Dollar. I should be glad to. Oh, incidentally, he has had me phone Mr. Arthur and ask that claim forms for both the Bettenhaus collection and the loss of the cruiser be brought here to the office just as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'd figured as much. Berman wasn't wasting any time. Oh, I know there still wasn't any concrete evidence that Berman was trying to pull a fast one. Ostensibly, the only reason for my trip out here was to watch over that fabulous jewel collection. A lot of good I'd been. He'd lost the collection and his boat, and the company'd have to pay. Then a wild idea hit me. I suddenly remembered something that had happened months ago, last July to be exact, when a big passenger liner, the Andrea Doria, had sunk off the Atlantic coast. According to the papers, when the survivors were brought into the port, the usual customs inspection was waived. And it occurred to me at the time that every one of those people could have easily smuggled in anything he could carry or conceal in his clothing. I'm not saying it did happen. I'm sure it didn't. But it could have. And if such an idea occurred to me, why not to a man like Berman, who was already pretty well known for his tricks to evade customs? Item 6, 20 cents, phone call to the Coast Guard and Captain Thorson. Thorson speaking. Johnny Dollar, Captain, answer me just one question, will you? Sure, what? When you brought them in, were the Bermans required to pass through customs? Well, no, of course not. There'd hardly be any reason to... Thank you very much. Item 7, 10 cents, another call. This time to Arthur Arthur at Western Maritime and Property Insurance. You caught me in the nick of time, Johnny. I was just walking out the door. On your way to Berman's office? 
Why, yes. With a handful of claims forms? Yes. Now, listen. Get there as fast as you can. Get there ahead of him. What? So that you can see if he brings anything into the office, like the Betton House collection. What? Though I doubt if he'd be that foolish. Foolish or not, how could he, Johnny? That collection, unfortunately, is at the bottom of the ocean. Listen to me. Keep him there. Maybe on the pretext of having to wait for me. Any reason you can think of. I'm afraid I don't understand. Just hold him until I get there, understand? Very well, Johnny. But what are you going to do? Arthur, I may have to break in and rob a hotel room. I went out and stationed myself across the street from the Beverly Wilshire. Five minutes later, I saw Randolph Berman walk out the front door and head east on Wilshire Boulevard in the direction of his office on Beverly Drive. I waited a few minutes to make sure he didn't turn back, then entered the hotel. At the desk, I learned the number of Berman's suite on the ninth floor. Break in? It would have taken a battering ram. So I tried knocking. All right, all right. You don't have to bust down the door. What's the matter? You forget your key and... No. Get out of here, buddy. Randy said not to let anybody in. He's out buying us clothes. Oh, he'd tell you to let me in, baby. Hey, who are you? Hernandez sent me up here from Guadalajara. Oh, well, then come in. Oh, you are in? Yeah. Well, have a drink, then. No, thanks. A girl's entitled to a couple of drinks after that dousing in the ocean, and you might as well... What about Hernandez? Your husband sold him the wrong stone from that collection. Sold? Oh, he gave it to him. Oh, then you know about it. Oh, sure. So he could make a legit-looking change in the insurance and convince everybody he was on the up and... You sure you're from Hernandez? You kidding? How else would I know about the whole deal? I don't know. Hey, Randy said not to let anybody in here or he'd kill me. Dumb blonde, he called me. You? A smart, beautiful girl like you? Oh, hey, you're okay. My name's Vi. Come on, let's have a drink. No, no, thanks. Uh, listen, Vi, I've got to get the right stone from that collection, the caliber diamond. Then I'll leave this one I've got in my pocket here. Which one you got? Let me see it. Oh, no, no, only Mr. Berman, and only when he gives me the caliber. Well, which one you got there, huh? Oh, never mind. I'll show it to Mr. Berman. I just want to see it. Not until I get the caliber from the collection. So, if he isn't here, if he's taking it to the office, I'll just... You think he's crazy? Let everybody know he... Let me see the one you have, huh? Look, I just told you. Anyway, how do I know I can trust you? I didn't even see you in Guadalajara. Oh, now you sound like Randy. Dumb blonde, he says. Keep the door locked. But I let the bellboy in with the drinks, and I let you in, didn't I? Well, let me see the one you got. Will you, if I get you the other one? From the hat box that didn't have to go through customs? How did you know? Hey, you're cutie. I bet you read about the Andrew Dorsey, just like Randy did. Come on, now let's take Where a is look. the hat box, boy? Now, wait a minute. Maybe I am dumb. Who did you say you are? Where's the hat box? No. No, I won't tell you. You get out of here. Not without the collection, boy. No, you can't. He... Randy would kill me. He'd kill me if he even knew I let you in here. Who are you? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Oh, please, Johnny, get out of here. The stuff in the bedroom? You can't go in there. I mean it. He'd kill me. Sorry, but that's your worry. Oh, no. Stop it or I'll set your eyes out. Hey, no, you can't. Pull in those claws, baby. No, you... Well, I hate to do this, but... No, no, help! Help! Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Get the manager up here. Get the police up here. Police? No. Oh, yes. Then you'd really be in trouble. You'd be better off if Berman tried to kill you. Now, where's the stuff? It's in the closet, on the floor, in the hat box. Thanks. Well, well. Just a handful, but worth a fortune. Well. Oh, now, wait a minute, girl. Put down that bottle. I, I, I gotta stop you. 
He'd kill me, don't you understand? Just for letting you in here. You don't know him. Look, baby, you're in this thing deep enough as it is. Don't try to make it any worse for yourself. But when he finds out that I... Listen. Yeah, he's come back. And I open up. Get my hands full. What'll I do? Where'll I go? Right here, behind this closet door. Quick. Ah! Johnny, Just stay there. Hang on to that bottle and think over what I told you about getting in deep. Hi, where'd you get these drinks? You got somebody in here. Bellboy? Hi, you half-witted bird brain. I told you. Who are you? The name is Dollar, Mr. Berman. Insurance Dick? I just dropped by to pick up the Benton House collection. Put it down, Dollar. I'm a good shot with this thing. Yeah. And it wouldn't be the first time you killed over a handful of jewelry, would it? That's right. Won't be the last. But you'll never know about it. Now, where's Vi? How should I know? She let you in here? I murdered that dizzy blonde. That dizzy blonde is a lot smarter than you think. Where is she? What do you mean? By helping me, she has a chance of getting out of this mess you've involved her in. Of getting out clean. That dirty two-time and... Dollar, I'm going to kill you. You'd even like to involve her in that, too, wouldn't you? Thanks for the idea. I'll make it look like she killed him. Oh, no, you... Oh, Look out. Ah! Oh, nice work with that bottle, Vi. Thought he missed you. Please, you won't let him... No, no, don't worry, baby. He won't bother anybody. Not for a long, long time. <laughs> Item 8, $245 even. Incidentals during a couple of days of relaxation under the California sun and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $453.95. Remarks? By way of getting off as easily as possible, Vi sang like a canary and incidentally cleared up a couple of other of his shady deals. Result? By the time his prison term runs out, he'll be too long dead to collect the insurance on his yacht. End of remarks, end of report. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the DeSalle matter. And I promise you a double barrel thrill in it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Lawrence Dobkin, Howard McNear, Jay Novello, Jack Edwards, Barney Phillips, and Raymond Burr. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dan Coverly speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>